Sephirah, Geburah. Title, Judgment, Only God Can Judge. Divine Name, One Timeless Lord, or The Great Teacher from Sikhism. Archangel, Sarakiel. Angelic Order, Seraphim, Powers, Dragons. Color, Crimson. Animal, Basilisk. Plant, Oak. Day, Friday. Hour, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Stone, ruby or bloodstone. Metal, steel. Incense, tobacco or charcoal. Image, the charioteer, Christ with sword of mouth on white horse. Symbol, sword crucifix. Planet, Mars. Elemental energy, tongues of fire, sacred flames of spirit. Sephirah, Chesed. Title, Mercy, Grace. Only God can know the heart. Divine name, Baha, from Baha'i. Archangel, Zadkiel, Prince of Justice, Mercy of God. Angelic Order, Dominions, Brilliant Ones, Hashmalim. Color, Royal Blue. Animal, Unicorn. Plant, Shamrock or Olive. Day, Saturday. Hour, 7.01 p.m. to 10 p.m. Stone, Blue Sapphire. Metal, Electrum. Incense, Cedar. Image, Crucifixion, Crucified King. Symbol, Tetrahedron. Planet, Jupiter. Elemental energy, living water. Sephirah, Bina. Title, Understanding. Lean not on thy own understanding. Divine Name, Tao, Jade Emperor, Nurturing Mother, from Taoism. Archangel, Zafkiel, Contemplation of God. Angelic Order, Aralim, Thrones, Mighty Ones. Color, Shining Black, Reflective Black. Black mirror, all color. Animal, woman. Plant, cypress or poppy flower. Day, none. Hour, 10.01 p.m. to 11 p.m. Stone, obsidian. Metal, Cobalt. Incense, Civet or Mirror. 
Image, matronly woman, veiled woman in black. Symbol, the golden female symbol. Planet, Saturn. Elemental energy, crystalline earth. Sephira, Chokma. Title, Wisdom. The wisdom of man is foolishness to God. Divine name, Hanaulium, Chendoism, Nongak. Archangel, Raziel, Secret of God. Angelic order, Cherubs, Ophanim, the wheels. Color, gray. Day, none. Hour, 11.01 p.m. to 12 a.m. Animal, man. Plant, amaranth. Stone, aquamarine. Metal, platinum. Incense, musk. Image, gray-robed, bearded man with staff. Symbol, golden male symbol. Planet, Uranus. Elemental energy, breath of God. Sephira, Kether. Tidal. The crown. Truth will set you free. Divine name. I am that I am. The one. Archangel. Metatron. One like unto God. The true Mithras. Angelic order. Chayoth. Ha Kadesh. The holy living creatures. Color, blue-white or opalescent. Day, leap year. Hour, 12.01 a.m. to 1 a.m. Animal, none. Plant, almond flower. Stone, diamond. Metal, uranium. Incense, ambergris. Image, androgynous being of light on throne of light. Symbol, decagram, ten-pointed star. Planet, none, the nexus of all worlds and universes. Elemental energy, spirit, thought, refined energy of Ayin. Pictures, symbols, and diagrams. Now in this section I'm going to speak a little extemporaneously instead of just reading what is here, just to give a little bit of extra explanation for the symbols and for the illustrations. The first one you see is the Eternity Cross, the balance, the bond between heaven and earth, on key, which is Sumerian for heaven, earth. It is also referred to commonly as the Durang key, which means, in Sumerian, the bond between heaven and earth. The triangle with the eye in it, which has the sword, the scepter, and the staff, is also a balanced symbol. It's the unity of the three pillars in balance. The sword is severity, the staff is merciful, the scepter is equity, and the eye of God, the one, is what is in the center. The lightning stands for justice, the tear stands for compassion. 
And the three rays are truth, wisdom, and understanding. The next symbol, the moth to the flame. This is a very specifically Orion symbol in that it is meant to symbolize how a Orion looks to and strives for God, the flame of God. Uh, but in this symbol it also represents that the moth drawn to the light, its uh, physical form sacrificed that its spirit might fly free and become one with the light of God. Basically what this is saying is that spiritual life is not compatible with physical life and as you draw closer and closer to the source of light, the source of true life, the physical body is less and less able to handle it and is eventually burned up or discarded. And this is a Gnostic concept being conveyed in this symbol. Next in the book we have the Archangelic Seals and Sigils. Now I've included the seals and sigils for the Archangels in the Kabbalistic video and um, I'm not going to go over them again here, but I would like to go over a couple of symbols that are not in that video, which, and the first one you see here is the Seal of the Supernals, the Triune. This is the three Sephiroth of Kether, Shokma, and Bina. Now these are considered the unmanifest Sephiroths, the ones that are not physically manifested in our universe or our galaxy. And this is the symbol for that trio, as it were. And the seal of Emmanuel is the symbol for the seven lower Sephiroth of the tree, which is um, Chesed, Gubura, Tipereth, Netzach, Hod, Yesod, and Malkuth. And together they form one symbol that stands for Emmanuel, which is God is with us. And then the next one you see is the seal of Uriel. Now, Uriel is not featured in the Kabbalistic Tree of Life because according to spirit Uriel is the light that permeates all of the Sephiroths and all of Emmanuel. So he's, he's, he's there everywhere but not represented specifically in the Tree of Life. The next illustration I'd like to talk about is on page 543 of the Elyon and this is basically a, a diagram showing you the uh, kind of a it's a kind of a, a basically a very quick easy reference chart for the cosmology of Uranism. You have the emanations from the transuniversal that go through the three veils of Kabbalah into Metatron, the solar door. From that emanates Zafkiel and Raziel. From those three emanate Zadkiel, Hanael, Sandalphon, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Sarakiel. And as you see in the illustration, Avalon is, is like the just above earth, which would be synonymous with Yesod, and then Gehenna, of course, is the underworld of earth, or the, the, the nasty hell of earth. And then as you see below, the diagram represents the negative aspects of personality and what they lead to, the militarism and fascism, sensualism, materialism, nihilism, selfism, ego religion, which boy we see a lot of that these days, secularism and humanism, these all lead to the abyss of Doth, which is, Doth is the symbol of knowledge without faith, wisdom, or understanding. Knowledge in and of itself is a black hole. It leads to only itself and it leads in this case to reincarnation which is the great Satan. The next illustration shows, gives you kind of a visual of, of how the vanities work. In this one we have Ishtar, is labeled as the vanity, one of 360 traditionally. And this being is a collective of all the little beings below and they are connected to this vanity and these lines you can think of those as what the book describes as tentacles connecting the person to their vanity. Now when someone tries to change the way they look at God and religion and tries to change the way they live their life or in other words tries to change the God of their heart that tentacle will snap and that person will 
uh, be broken free of that vanity. However, in the next illustration you'll see that you have a person with a unplugged soul. The tentacle has snapped. You have a, a being without an overmind, without a, uh, a puppet master, so to speak. And this puts the person in, a, in actually in a very precarious position because now they can go just about anywhere and do about anything. And you see by this illustration that if they choose to ch take the steps up to Doth and thereby seek uh, service with a different vanity, in other words, they say they change from um, the Babylon vanity to the beast. It's still a vanity and it still leads to Doth and it still leads to reincarnation and they're still coming back. Okay, um, Or they can take the other step, try to take the leap of faith over Doth, which requires a leap of faith, and then seek union with an archangel. And then they can slowly, according to the book, they will slowly be naturalized as citizens of the solar realms and eventually work their way more towards heaven. And we as Urians seek a slightly different way of doing this. In this illustration it shows the solar gate which is referred to in the Orphic Mysteries which leads to the top symbol which is really just a symbol for the uh, black hole at the center of galaxy where Metatron sits. It's the doorway to the infinite, to the unmanifest, to the nexus if you will. And what this person is going to do in the illustration is climb the middle path which is the path of Orionism. And by doing so, that person's string will be attached to Uriel. Uriel is the overmind, if you will, of Urianism. And Uriel is the guardian of the middle path. The next illustration is the realms of the earth slash world, which is basically what you would consider the local area of heavens and hells that most human beings are subject to. Realms of the world are nine and they are the heart or earth spirit realm, Abaddon or the realm of undeath, the glooms or pit of darkness or woe, Gehenna or the valley of the shadow of death, the world, the earth soul realm or Avalon, the earth, the material veil or the realm of mankind, Babylon of the sky or the atmospheric heaven, ever changing and in flux. The primeval realms of the old ones or elder powers. And Eden earth, the holy land of the sky, the outer ring of the sun. Between Avalon and man's plane of existence is a gray and dreamy realm of mist and confusion known as limbo, which is a transition realm. It has no number but is and is not being a kind of a hazy dreamland of mankind's collective unconscious. Between Gehenna and man's plane there exists a realm that is not and is being a transitory place of the restless dead, echoes of the dead, which might be termed in the Catholic sense purgatory, the negative nightmare of human existence. The next illustration is a a very good chart for the basic entire layout of Orion cosmology. It shows the realms of heaven and hell in our local earth. It shows the uh, realm of the moon. It shows the kingdoms of the sun. And you can see in this illustration each archangel is represented as a circle in the sun. They are the rulers of realms within the sun. In the center of the sun, of course, is the Orphic Gateway, which is, if you remember some of the videos earlier that were read, the Orion, the vis visualizations of traveling into the black hole in the center of the universe. First, what you do is you travel through the sun, which becomes a vortex of light. The Orphic Gate is the center of the vortex of light, which then takes you to Metatron, where there's another vortex of light, the big one, into the Nexus. Now, in this illustration, it shows also emanation, how 
The light of God comes through Metatron and emanates outward as Uriel, Zaphkiel, and Raziel. And it goes into the sun. As you can see, Uriel's coming into the sun. And it permeates everything all the way down. Also shows the middle path from the middle of the earth all the way through the moon, through the sun, and into the uh, solar or the uh, nexus gateway. The next illustration is a very simplified um, version of the cosmology and the middle path. Uh, it's a little more for quick reference. And the last symbols I would like to cover in this video are the Klepothic and Sephirothic trees of life that we have in the book. These are symbolic and for easy reference in dealing with the studies of Kabbalah. So, the first illustration is the traditional Klepothic tree. Now we don't recommend generally spending too much time dealing with the Klepothic since it is a negative and downward journey. And um, I'm just going to show you the illustration and let you make of it what you will. Now the next illustration shows the, the uh, Klepothic tree next to the tree of life. And you can look at this in two ways. And the illustration after it shows you one of the ways. You can look at it as the two trees, the, the bottom of the tree of life, Malkuth, is synonymous with the top of the tree, the Klepothic tree, with Gehenna. And so you think of Gehenna and Malkuth kind of coexisting in roughly the same temporal spatial area and the Klepothic tree descending down from there and the tree of life ascending up. Uh, another way that can that this can be looked at is that the Klepothic tree is the backside or the shadow side of the tree of life. And there are negative aspects to the Sephiroth. For example, Hod is glory. And that's meant to be the glory of God, to glorify God. And a Urian who is a Hod person or an Orange Order will use their art to glorify God. The back side of this, the, the negative side of Hod, is self-glorification or ego. And, and that is a negative trait. And it can be considered a Klepothic trait. Just as in Tibereth, true beauty is the tree of life side, and vanity is the Klepothic side of that particular Sephiroth. That is just an example of how to, of one of many ways to view these uh, diagrams of the trees of life.